What's up, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of Lockdown 23 and 1. And today, ladies and gentlemen, if you can't tell from the title and the thumbnail alone, we are going to be doing a highly detailed breakdown and review of 60 Days In, the hit TV show on A&E where volunteers go into the cell blocks. Most of them have never been to jail ever in their life, you know. Uh, but they go into these blocks voluntarily, and they're there to try to expose the dirt within the system. But it really just turns into them trying to survive, hoping they don't get beat up, you know. And that's why I'm here, okay? I've been to prison two times in my life. I have turned my life around 100%, and now I am on the straight and narrow, and I want people to stay the hell out, okay? Prison and jail is for nobody. But if you have to go, it's best to be prepared, and that's why I'm here. Even though these shows can be very entertaining, my breakdowns can be very entertaining, <laughs> to say the least. But it's for knowledge and understanding to help people survive if they got to go. All right, And not only do we do these reviews, but we have interviews from people all across this country and other countries telling their wildest and craziest moments in the penitentiary. All right, So if that's something that you're into, please do not forget to hit the like subscribe and notification bell and before we get into this breakdown i want to just address something that i did on the previous 60 days in review that i did uh i think they're in alabama okay and when the guy walked into the cell block it was a bunch of white guys in there i'm talking about like 20 30 white guys in there staring at the new guy coming in all right actually it wasn't alabama it was, it was some other state i can't remember but um a few people in the comment section, not a lot, just a few, and I probably shouldn't address it, but I will because I want y'all to understand what I was saying when I said it, all right? The guy came in the cell block, and it was like 20, 30 white guys staring at him, you know? And I said, damn, I ain't never seen no shit like this. And then, of course, people in the comment section with evil in their hearts are going to twist the words around and make it seem like I feel as though uh, there shouldn't be that many white guys in there. Look. White guys get locked up all the time. I'm just saying in my area, look at the picture on the screen, all right? That's what I'm used to, ladies and gentlemen. That right there is what I'm used to. Only like two or three white guys in a block. I've been put into blocks where I was the only white guy in there, you know? Picture that. It's sticking out like a sore thumb, you know what I mean? Uh, but that is what I'm used to, you know? It is, and it's sad to say, but every establishment I've ever been in, white guys have been outnumbered. 20 to 1, you know? It is what it is, man. But anyways, let's get into it. So that is Calvin, ladies and gentlemen. He is a high-risk teacher, I'm guessing, probably for troubled students that, you know, get in a lot of trouble or something. But uh, inmates are getting a little suspect of this cat named Calvin, you know? All right, so this guy, I guess he went out for an interview, and the guys are a little suspect. He said to someone else, he said, hey, man, did you did you talk on the documentary? He said, I ain't say shit. So the guy's pretty, he's probably questioning, man, I probably should never have went out there. You know, if I was a contestant in this shit, I'd tell him straight up, bro, do not even ask me. Don't even ask me to come back there to give you a little input. I'm not coming back, bro. People would hate me on that show. They'd be like, man, this guy ain't giving out no kind of kick it, man, you know, and then... I'm on the show, and I'm like, hey, even though I'm on the show, uh, and I volunteered, man, how about you blur my face? <laughs> I want to blur her face even though I volunteered. In all actuality, man, they shouldn't pull out any of the, they should pull people out, but they should never pull out the contestants in the show. That would definitely, definitely keep a lot of heat off of them. But yeah, he's explaining to people what it was like talking to these guys. And, and the other guy just got pulled out, so it's kind of taking a little heat off of him, you know? And the more people that get pulled out, the more people want to go and do the little interview thing, you know? The more the more, the merrier type of situation. So they might, like, say they see you be somebody, and they might be like, why are you getting fight and stuff like that? They change the question. So he said to them, yeah, they're, they're just pretty much trying to figure out how inmates work. He said, yeah, they, you go in there and they say, hey, uh, they're watching from the cameras. Hey, uh, why'd you trade your tray? You know, that's what he said. And now the inmates are taking, taking it and running with it. 
you know they're saying oh so they're trying to they're trying to study us they're trying to learn about our movements you know uh, by him saying that it's definitely it might help because he's actually letting people know that hey they are watching for sure you know what i mean so i don't think it's gonna hurt him or really help him too much by saying that all right so we're jumping scenes here this guy's name is john okay and he's about to get a celly What did he just call that shit? He said he's a paramedic. Let me rewind that really quick. Barbiturates. Barbitch. Barbiturates and shit like. I ain't never heard that word in my life, man. If as soon as he said that shit, I would have stopped. I would have dropped all my stuff, turned around, and said, "You a plant, dog? Nobody uses the damn literature like that in the cell blocks, homeboy." <laughs> never heard of it though. You're undercover 24 hours a day, seven days a week. I need to be careful. by some of the guards in there. Look, they've been screaming, they let us out of here within, they probably been on lockdown for a couple hours. You know what I mean? Try doing that shit for a year. A year with a magical one hour out a day, if that. You know, some places they give you two hours out a week. And all the rest of the time, unless they let you out for that little funky ass one hour, you're going to be sitting right in that damn cell, whether with someone else or by yourself. And that shit will drive you insane. I can't even begin to break down the amount of boredom it is sitting in that damn box. You said we was gonna lose a red The life is back on. And we get your energy out. You want your freedom, you know what I mean? And the power was out while the camera light was still right. I all them cameras go and they got cameras in their cells which is pretty high maintenance you know this jail even though it's rough when it comes to the inmates um it's a rather nice facility man you know there ain't too much graffiti on the walls like you've seen in other jails uh they probably get really mad at the inmates for doing that you know what i mean you see a little bit up there with the names and stuff but uh if they got blank walls like that, chances are they're keeping tabs on who's in the cell, making sure they ain't writing on them and all that stuff. So this facility, it, it, it could be rough, but it's definitely a cleaner one, okay? You could definitely tell it's a cleaner one. It's already hard being in jail. A rumor had came to me that I was a fed. Somebody said that to me. Oh man! Do some friendship with some. All right, ladies and gentlemen. So we're back with Calvin and these guys throwing little rumors out there that they think he's a feds, but uh, they're still talking to him and dealing with him. So chances are they're probably just picking on him, you know, messing with him. He's a newer guy, and that's how inmates have fun, man. Call people snitches and feds. If you're weak, man, they'll call you anything under under the sun. You know, that's just how it is, man. They'll pick on you. And they'll get entertainment from you. But some of these guys might truly think that he is working with someone. I don't know. But this situation coming up right here, he's getting his state tray. And let's really pay attention because this shit happens on a regular basis, okay? Do not ever do this. This guy is trying to make a deal with him. He said, I'll give you a piece of my sandwich for that meat. Looks like Salisbury steak, too. I don't know. Oh, my God. Let me. Oh, my goodness. That's Salisbury steak, ladies and gentlemen. Ooh, look at that Kool-Aid too. Salisbury steak was one of my favorites. But this guy's 
trying to say I'll give you something later for that patty now or some shit. But the guy looked at his patty and and thought about it, okay? Let's run it back really quick. And look how long, after the guy asks him for it, how long he stares at the patty to say yes, okay? He had to think about it, okay? And I'm going to tell you right now exactly what he's thinking about. If he He's thinking, if I say no, this guy is going to, you know, probably get a little angry at me. And it's going to just add fuel to the fire of all these guys picking on me or saying that they think I'm a fed. So he said, you know what? He weighed out his options and he says, yeah, I'll do the trade because he's just trying to get on the good side of anybody's side. He's just trying to make friends, I guess, you know? And I've told y'all before, sharing is caring, but at the same time, sharing can show people that you're just a weak ass fool, man. You're scared to say no. If that's you, ladies and gentlemen, you get a state tray, you're fresh into jail, tell them hell no, I'm eating all this, dog. You should actually rebuttal with his ass, like, nah, bro, I'm good, but can I get your patty for something later? Hit him with the reverse psychology jank, and then you know what? He's looking at his patty now, like, damn. Uh, wait, 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 what's going on? Nah, I don't, no deal, no deal. Everybody pretty much respect him. He just kind of run things. This is not a game to be played with. You don't mess with him. I got a cup of water for a Two times bro is pretty deep. I got him. And that goes to show you a little bit of his mentality. I like him. I like that guy. You know why? Because he came around, he said, I got a cup of water for one of your cakes. I got a cup of water for one of those cakes. And ain't nobody jumping on that shit, man. But he said it. And that shit would have made me laugh my ass off if I was in the block and he said it right next to me. I'm like, man, man come on. I'm like, bet, bet, bet. So you know, if he don't like me, I know it's gonna be four or five other guys that don't like me as well. And so, yeah, I, I need him to like me. Avoid using gang involvement as some sort of protection mechanism. Just don't get involved with the gangs. See, COs don't know what the hell they're talking about, man. Look, I can guarantee you, just because you befriend a gang member doesn't mean you're getting involved in gangs. I mean, of course, some shit might come your way if you get too deep or too close with those individuals. You might fall into the whole group this type of thing you could get got to if an enemy rides out on them but if you're just becoming friends with other gang members because there's gang members all over prison and jail it's just it's littered you know so you are going to come across a gang member and is it bad to make friends with them nah hell nah man you know i strongly believe certain situations didn't come my way because hey Oh, Hightower, whatever this guy's name is right here, he would have been the first cat I'd start talking to. Just for the simple fact that I think he might have a few uh, strings that he could pull, you know, to get shit done in the block. Yeah, I'll probably befriend him, man. I might be like, hey, man, you trying to play some casino, man? You know, something, you trying to, you trying to play some spades? Something, you want to be a spade partner? Look, my spade game is unlike any other, bro. And then, look, if you became just somewhat close, somewhat friends with this guy and if he is some kind of head honcho in a gang the guy's gonna make sure look no one messes with you because he 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 got a liking to you he, he's grown a liking to you uh so it can go good and bad okay both ways uh befriending gang members it just depends on how you do it you get too close to them you get too deep in with their mix you could be held accountable with them now we're jumping back into the the uh paramedics cell okay and they are on lockdown still they've been on lockdown for 12 hours and he has a brand new celly so this is a crash course into getting to know your cellmate because usually if you're not on lockdown you know you can go in and out in the cell and you don't really talk to him probably and get to know him a lot until nighttime lockdown time and that's when you sit there at night and just talk to each other if he's the talkative kind of guy, which this guy definitely looks like he is. So right now they're on a maximum security lockdown still, probably from the power going out. What's up, boo? That dude don't even know the guy, and he rolled up on him and said, What's up, fool? He just walked in the cell that day. He's already playing games with him. I'm like, what, dog? You don't even know me. What's up? <laughs> but I'm like, okay, you that type of guy. Then let's play then, homeboy. Hey, My roommate has a very strong personality. 
he doesn't take the cues that I want to be left alone very well. Yeah, and he's doing, uh, you know, the normal thing. If And, you know, I've never understood this. Can people not? There's certain people that just can't distinguish when to shut the hell up, you know? And that's typically when fights happen, man. If the guy ain't giving you eye contact and he does simple shit like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's cool. That's cool. And, and you can, man, you can tell when someone ain't interested in you talking. If you cannot tell when someone loses interest in you opening your damn mouth, you're a maniac. I'm sorry to tell you. You are not down to earth. You might got some psych problems, you know? Just my honest opinion. But this guy's giving up everything. All the signs of, hey, leave me the freak alone, man. I'm just trying to read my book in his new celly. Don't care. He's just trying to get some kick. He's like a little puppy trying to play you know and they got just looking at this camera they got oranges on deck man look at all them damn oranges sandwiches and everything i don't know if y'all ever heard the story of when i ate a dead man's orange in jail mm, that's a good one man maybe someone link it in the comment section look i'm blowing bubbles out like peter <laughs> <laughs> look at that guy's a maniac 100%. This guy, see, guys like this, he shouldn't even be in the cell block, man. He should be in a loony bin. If you were ever go to jail, ladies and gentlemen, you are going to see cats like this all the time. I've done a video in the past, too, about psychotic people in prison and jail. They shouldn't be there, okay? Jail and prison, in my eyes nowadays, is just a damn psych ward. Now, look, if that was me, if that was me in this cell, I would have closed my, I probably would have laughed a little bit, brushed it off, and went back to reading. But if he kept on messing with me, I would have closed my book nice and quietly peacefully sat up in my bunk and said look bro no disrespect but when i'm reading and i'm vibing to myself leave me the hell alone and that's it and that probably would have stopped everything in its tracks yeah, my meatballs didn't have no sauce on it or nothing huh? <laughs> these are plain old balls <laughs> harry potter's on man you're, you're like old harry potter man <laughs> Ah, oh, this guy's carrying him, man. He goes, hey, Harry Potter's on. You look like a Harry Potter fan. What the hell does that mean, man? Because he's reading a book? Because the poor guy looks like Harry from Harry Potter? I don't know why he said that, but he's carrying him, man. You know, he's carrying him. I wouldn't be surprised if the guy starts calling him Harry. <laughs> and who the hell thought of Harry Potter as a name? That's a horrible first name, you know? Harry, but... This guy is definitely disrespecting him, joking him, but not joking him at the same time to the point where the guy should stand up and fight him, you know? He's pushing his limits. He's pushing his limits with this guy. I'm uh, holding it for you. Oh my god! Did he say I've been holding that in for you? He just blew ass all over this guy. Holding for you. Oh, this guy's filthy. He said, I've been holding that in for you. Oh, that right there, dog. I've told y'all about what to do if you fart in a cell. That is definitely not what you do. He just don't care about this guy 100%. Either he don't care about him, he's just messing with him, or he's just purely crazy. Okay, I can almost guarantee, though, he would not have done that with some big ass dude underneath the bunk, some real convict, you know? Um, if you got a fart, okay, you get your ass up out the bunk and you go put your cheeks right up to the crack of the freaking door so that even if it none of it gets out the cell, at least you attempt it, okay? That's respect. What that guy just did, I would have stand up and probably threw him off the rack, man. So that's complete 100% disrespect, man. And that guy knows it. He don't give two shits, though. That's... He's, he's carrying that guy left and right, man. World, if somebody was irritating me or annoying me, I would just go somewhere else and leave. Here, I can't do that. Sometimes I just need quiet. Guys like him, they'll hold it all in. They'll hold all the annoying shit in for years sometimes, okay? And then third year come around and doing time, they can't hold it in no longer. And I told y'all about situations do not snap don't snap because i've seen guys like this just hold it in hold it in and it builds up and it builds up and finally they snap and they always get punished 
after they snap. You know, you got to keep your composure. There's a ton of annoying individuals in jail and lockup, and you're going to be surrounded by them. And just like he said, anyone on the streets, if you're annoyed by them, you can just walk away. Get the hell away from them. Not in here. You got anything going on. You're in trouble. You know, people picking on you. Anything. You don't like them. They stink. Whatever. You can't leave. <laughs> You're stuck around these fools for the rest of your bid. And you're going to end up hating people. And that's how people lose their lives in prison, man. You know, the hate builds up. The hate builds up. Next thing you know, they get a shank and it's going in 50, 60 times. People snap. That's all there is to it. But I strongly recommend you don't. It's important to me, and I don't have that here. Oh! <laughs> All right, y'all, this shit's crazy. But I am about to tell y'all a funny-ass story. Funny-ass story. Just came into the cell block. I'll never forget it. Uh, I was in there for a violation. I had six months. Well, I, haven't, I didn't have it yet, but <clears throat> that's what I got. But they put me in the cell block. They had... Uh, this area in the jail called Landing, and they had single man cells. It was nice, but it was very small. It was five cells, and there was like five or six people in the whole freaking block. It was boring, but at the same time, you had your own cell. So at night, they would lock it down, and I'll never forget. I, I don't know what I had eaten that night, but damn. Look, I was blowing ass all night. That shit was echoing through the freaking cell block. <laughs> I, I was doing crazy shit, man. I was getting right up on the bars and letting loose. The, everyone's like, damn, bro, you all right? And there was nobody really in the cell block that gave a shit. So I was having fun with it, man. You know what I mean? <laughs> just look at his face first. He says, but sometimes I just need quiet. And it goes straight to this. A&E producers, y'all know what y'all are doing. Oh! Last one, the little little baby Jake made him laugh. You hear him laugh a little bit? <laughs> that reminds me of Ace Ventura. Yeah, I mean not Ace Ventura, what Dumb and Dumber, where he gave his homeboy Harry. Hey, that's funny. His name's Harry too. Hmm. Uh, he gave his homeboy Harry uh, some laxative, and and he he drops a major deuce, and at the very end it goes. <laughs> Ooh, I'm starting to feel my patience slipping. <laughs> Oh, man, that guy's loving it. But we're back into the pod with Calvin, the high-risk teacher, ladies and gentlemen. Let's see what's going on. It looks like they're still in lockdown as well. Let's go, gentlemen. Let's go, let's go, let's go. Count time, it looks like. Okay, you see what he's doing now? They're doing security checks, probably because the power went out. Okay, he's saying something. He's coming around with a Facebook. Okay, they don't typically do that every time, at least in establishments I've seen. Uh, they do counts. They come through, count, 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 count. But they never check Facebook unless there was a mess up in the count or some kind of security breach or they're just doing annual, you know, face count, face card check to make sure everybody's where they're supposed to be at, you know? Uh, and, and believe it or not, there would be times in prison or uh not jail so much because it's on lockdown a lot more but in prison in dorms guys will switch bunks for the night you know and i've seen guys get torn off because the night that they magically switch bunks so they could chill with their homeboys in that pod or something they'll come around with the face card and then they'll be like oh you're not the right face that's supposed to be at this bunk sir you know and then they find out and they go to hole 229 and that's a major 229 you know uh restricted area being in a restricted area that's probably going to boost them up to a level four or five but uh you know this guy he's going around with his his face cards and as you can sell each face that he goes to uh they go in to sell afterwards uh it's just a more secure check you know rather than just counting but they might do it every time i don't know and it's stuffy a 10 by 10 room with two people in there all day is all jails like this he said it's all jails like this and you heard what the guy said he's saying just like i am you know he said hell no nah, there's way worse jails than this you know 
And what did I say right in the very beginning? This is a sweet looking jail. I mean, the blankets look like they're brand new. The paint job on the walls are good. These guys are doing face card counts. This establishment is actually trying to keep the inmates at bay. They're, they're trying to keep these guys under control. And it's seeming like they're doing a pretty good job at it. You know, because I'll say it once, I'll say it again. You can tell a lot about establishment by how filthy and tagged up or uh, graffiti, the walls, all that stuff is, you know. That's how, number one sign that you can tell a facility cares or if they don't care. All right, let's pause it right here really quick, though, ladies and gentlemen. As you can see, uh, looks like everyone just got their bag lunches. These are all sandwiches, double-layered sandwiches wrapped up with a little bologna and stuff. People hated that shit in lockup, man, but not old death. I love that damn bologna sandwich with, a little, with, with some potato chips and some mustard in it. Woo! Oh, let me, let, me, let, me, let me stop it again. You see the blanket? Most people will put a blanket on the table like this, including myself, all the official card players, lay down their blanket, okay? Because it keeps the cards in shape. When you have cards and you're playing on the steel, it can, it can scratch them up, it can uh, just, and they slip and slide off the table very easy. So a blanket is amazing for cards and lockup. You know, you can slam the card, it's not gonna make a huge popping sound, it's not gonna go flying off the table. Um, but yeah, if you were to go into jail for the very first time and see cats with blankets on the table, that's why. They're just playing cards or they're about to play cards, you know? Uh, another little piece of advice for y'all out there. Now, ladies and gentlemen, we are jumping back to Matt. Matt is the veteran. I don't know what, uh, you know, what military branch he was working for, but he is a veteran and he just got himself a new cell. He looks like an old head and, you know, you gotta be suspect about the old heads coming in. You know, the real ones know why. Matt. Matt? Yeah. Well, Matt, my name's James again. How long have I had you in here? Just uh, since after that first break. When are you getting out? I'm not for probably a little while. What do you got you in here for? Growing weed. The basement was full, you know what I'm saying? A thousand plants got put you in the federal zone. Yeah, there were a thousand plants. It's a whole basement. We're talking about we're pretty close to the thousand. Damn, I ain't seen this shit yet. That fool, that old head probably grown some pot in his days, you know. Uh, he said the basement was covered, you know. And, you know, weed plants, they do start off as little baby jank. So you could easily fit that. I remember when I first got out of prison, ladies and gentlemen, I got out of prison, right? i never forget this shit. I met up with my homeboy. And this is another piece of advice. Be very careful about meeting up your homeboys that you met in prison. <laughs> Anyway, I went to the club with this cat, man. This is before I met Brittany, my wife. Uh, I went to club with this cat, man. We had a good time, man. We got drunk as hell. He's like, yo, we got to stop by my homeboy's house really quick, right? So we go to his homeboy's house, and inside of that shit, I hear all these fans blowing. And I go in the back. And there's nothing but weed plants everywhere. You know what I mean? It was a, it was a damn weed shop in his house. But, but the crazy thing about it was... The next day, I'm talking about the next day, they all got raided. They all got raided, man. And I saw it on the news and I said, shit, I was just in that joint last night. You know, it's crazy, man. And for the next week, I was like, God, I hope these guys probably saw me going there. They're probably watching me right now. You know what I mean? But this old head, man, he sounds like he might know a little bit about growing some buds. You don't have to tell me much. You just you tell me the whole basement. Boom! You seen how that tiles look like? Got there real easy. Sure. I'm not an old dummy. I've probably been doing about 35. Easy 35. Right. Professional weed grower. You put me in here with. Oh God! A and E. What are y'all doing? Did y'all do this shit on purpose, man? They gave him a cover story that he's growing bud, and they just threw in the. Bud growing guru up in that joint. Anyways, ladies and gentlemen, I hope you did enjoy. Like I said, please do not forget to hit the like, subscribe, and notification bell. I drop content like this on a regular basis. The reviews we do twice a week, sometimes three. Go check out all the links in the description of the video. Add me up on Twitch, Twitter, Instagram. Go check out my Teespring page for all your Lockdown 23 and 1 merchandise. And as always, ladies and gentlemen, I salute to every last one. You've been supporting me since the beginning and everybody who's just now joining the lockdown compound. Y'all be easy, stay safe, 
and stay free, ladies and gentlemen.